Well, we, there's kind of these three great historical Spanish composers of which there were recordings done early in the 20th century. Uh, with Albinus, it was all solo works. With Granados, it was solo works. But with Defaya, he'd made a recording of these great songs with soprano. Well, the very first time I got an email about um, this proposal of the project, uh, I had to read it a couple of times, the email, because I was like, what? The fire, I'm going to sing the fire. Okay, I got that part. But the fire is accompanying me. And, uh, and finally, I realized that uh, uh, this is a fantastic opportunity. going to be singing live with a piano accompaniment that's also live, yet it's initiated by someone who has long been dead, but whose intentions and emotions and feelings are somehow translated to the actual live instrument. So in a sense, um, the past is brought back to life and something completely new is being created. Well, there was also arrangements done with cello. And it's like, why not put both on the album? Is it appropriate to have a soprano? Yeah, so we'll do it with the soprano. Let's do it with cello as well. And then the matter of finding the right cellist was, I'll start with a good friend of mine. So. <laughs> So when this project evolved, um, obviously it's a tremendous thrill to, to be led on a magic carpet by the composer who wrote it, especially on how they originally wrote it. And so the difficulty in making this recording and putting this all together is to figure out um, what is appropriate, but also to water it down, not water it down, whittle it down, <laughs> back to the core mm -hmm. of what he wrote, which is a vocal song. But I think the ones that the 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 songs that work the best mm -hmm. are the ones that were actually never touched, yep. like Nana yep. or Astriana. Uh, Nana, which is the lullaby, um, there's nothing to do except for just sing this beautiful prayer-like lullaby. But you need to play it as if you're singing it. So those few uh, movements of these of these songs, I feel the most free in being able to just simply sing and not try to zigzag through. What else is possible other than, well, that's what makes music great, is that singular, pure musical experience that's about something so simple that it can be called a lullaby. Yeah. How do you make it your own? How do you express and create your own lines? Uh, with an accompaniment where, where the piano part that's fixed 
that was the challenge for me and I love challenges and I and I uh, listened to the original recording and I realized okay this is a singer who was greatly indulged by the composer on the piano the, the difficulty in putting that one together is because when Defaya was at the piano he was playing with a vocalist that was very free yes. and not adhering to his score mm -hmm. but Defaya being the guy who wrote it could change anything he wanted because it's his. Mm -hmm. So throughout the score, he would change things left, right, hold things longer, elongate things, and nothing that I'm looking at actually is what I'm hearing. Um, so it, the trick was to listen to their original recording only once, and then just concentrate on the piano um, recording, and just trying to figure out how can I sing over this structured pillars and make it seem as if he's accompanying me. So when we were talking about uh, when it clicked with Defia and myself today, um, what else is there? I clicked with Manuel de Fire, <laughs> and I was there to witness it, and we documented it. Because it's breathing new life into a song cycle that's been done, oh, for the last 80 years. So it's really a new way of, of doing it, and, and of course, these days, um, who wouldn't want to record um, in a new way? these songs. I'm sure there exist at least, who knows, 20, 25 recordings out there of different singers interpreting this song cycle with pianists, um, but ah, this is very unique and I wouldn't miss the opportunity.